Hello my friends, Ahsoka the Geek here, and for today's video I'm just going to take a look back at some of the figures from McFarland Toys' first year with the DC uh, license. Uh, this is not going to be a comprehensive review of every figure, I just kind of grabbed some figures from the shelf and I just want to talk about um, the figures in general and just, you know, the first year of the uh, DC license be belonging to McFarland Toys. So, um, overall, I've really enjoyed all of the figures that uh, McFarlane Toys has released this year. Definitely been Batman heavy, but I'm a, a Batman fan, so I'm totally cool with that. I, I love all the characters that he's chosen. Uh, as someone who is still collecting older DC Direct and Mattel DC Universe Classics figures, I'm getting my, you know, fix of other DC characters from those companies still. So, for me, the, the figures Todd is producing I'm totally fine with I of course I'm looking forward to him doing more uh, diverse figures in the future but uh, if he just sticks with Batman I'd be totally cool with that but I love Batman but uh, yeah I, I know we're gonna get more diverse figures in the future um, and that's I'm, I'm sure that will happen but anyways let's talk about what has come out this year so I think it's been a very impressive year for McFarlane toys he's released some amazing figures a lot of figures and considering they've only had the license for a year, I'm really impressed with year one. Really looking forward to year two. Um, but yeah, let's just take a look at some figures. Let's talk Let's talk some toys here. So, um, you know what, let's just start with Cyborg over here in the corner. So, here is the Cyborg figure from McFarland Toys. Uh, this is one of those figures, I, if you had asked me, hey, give me a list of your top ten figures that you want, I would never put this figure on there. It never occurred to me, but man, I am so glad they made this figure. I, I don't even watch this cartoon, but I just love the design of this figure so much. I love the translucent blue parts of the figure. The design of the figure is awesome. It's, it's the perfect, um, you know, sort of combination of McFarlane's style that he's trying to do with the animated figures and the classic style that this character is based on. So, Cyborg is awesome. On the flip side, we also have, let me put this guy over there, the animated Batman figure, which was also an interesting figure. This is the vari variant figure, um, but this was interesting. This was one of the first figures that he released, and um, you know, it's a weird, it's a combination of like the new Batman Adventures Batman and the classic animated series Batman, but also the sort of you know unique style of McFarlane. And I dig this figure. I love this variant especially, the blue and the gray. I just dig the old school blue and gray Batman. So, I love that one as well. Um, here is Wonder Woman. Here's the Gal Gadot Wonder Woman 84 Wonder Woman. Um, this is not a perfect figure. I, it, it's so interesting because this totally looks like her from some angles. Uh, Rob D. Toys posted a picture recently and it totally looks like her with the angle that he chose. But overall, the likeness just isn't there, and the legs are too long. I mean, I love this figure. It's a really nice figure. I love the quality of the costume. Um, but, yeah, the legs are just, they're just too long. You know, if they were, a lot of people have customized this to shorten the legs, but if the legs were just a little bit shorter, this would be a really spectacular figure. Even though it is already a spectacular figure, it would be perfect if the legs were long and if the help, head sculpt was a little bit better. Um, so there you go, but it's still a great figure. Alright, who else do we got? Let's look at some Batmans, some more Batmans. So here is the Arkham, I don't know, I, for, I forget if this is the Arkham Knight. Yeah, I think this is the Arkham Knight Batman. I don't think it's the Arkham Origins one, this is the Arkham Knight one. This is one of the later releases this year. And man, I love this figure so much. It is so detailed, and it looks like it stepped out of the video game, but it also just looks like a really cool... Batman like movie costume. This could totally work in a movie. Um, it's just a beautifully designed costume and suit and it's just a really awesome figure. So well done on this guy. Look at this. And by the way when I posted my review of this I had no idea what the weapons were called um, and I had so many comments of people telling me exactly what those weapons were so uh, the people who, who who know their stuff know their stuff man. Let me tell you. Um, on the flip side of that figure, here's the gold variant version of that figure. So, a lot of people have mixed reactions to these variants. I love them, especially this gold version. They were at first kind of bronze, but these ones, the latest ones are now gold with like black highlights. And just looks really cool. Look at this guy. He looks amazing. He's just a really awesome figure. And I love the gold. 
Um, if you don't like it, uh, you don't really need to buy them. But uh, I think a lot of us really do like them. So I um, hope they continue to make more. All right, what else we got? Okay, let's look at the... I think this is the Red Death. Yeah. So this is like the Red Death from the Dark Knight... Dark Knight's Metal figures. The, the Red Death. I, I keep wanting to call him the Red Racer. I might be saying the name wrong, but whatever. It's, a, again, a really nice figure. It's It's got like a interesting pose, like he's in motion. The, the legs are sort of far across a little bit. But, man, the detailing on this is fantastic. And it looks very comic book accurate. And that's just... One thing that I love about McFarlane's choice in figures is even if he's doing a bunch of Batman figures, they're at least comic book accurate figures. I love comic books, as you can see over here to the left or right, hopefully. Um, so I'm all for comic book accurate figures. Which takes us to the Hellbat. So the Hellbat was one of the first figures he, he released from this line. There was the wing. And man, what a way to start off. Because this costume, or this figure, the armor that this figure... This figure is an armored version of Batman, and it's from a very specific story where Batman goes to save his son or bring him back to life, and his son's on Apocalypse. So he has to, of course, get some armor to take on Darkseid with, and that's where this, you know, figure is based on. It's based on a, a comic book, and it's such a cool figure. Love the red and the black. Um, it's just beautiful. It's just, like, got a medieval look to it as well, and the detail is spectacular. And this is one of... McFarlane Toy's first Batman figures he ever produced, and look how amazing that is, um, you know, just right off the bat. <laughs> and the wings are really cool as well. So there's the Hell Bat. Put that guy over there. All right, what else? What else we got? Okay, here is Nightwing. Now, one of the biggest criticisms criticisms we have of Mr. Nightwing here is that it looks like he's wearing a diaper. I don't really agree with that. I could see it, but is it, you know? I, I still like this figure quite a bit. I don't think it looks like he's wearing a diaper. I can see what people are talking about, but I, for one, uh, choose not to acknowledge that. I, I like this figure a lot. I love the head sculpt. It's a great uh, head sculpt for Dick Grayson, Nightwing, and it's just a fantastic figure. So, yeah, and this is the red variant. Uh, this was like the New 52 version of it, which isn't really that accurate, but hey, I'm totally cool with variants. You know, they had to spend a lot of money to make these figures so if they need to do variants and gold versions and blue versions um you know to make up that cost i'm totally cool with it i'll buy some of them i might not buy all of them but uh you know i'm totally fine with that all right let's look at dawn breaker so here is the dawn breaker here is a evil green lantern version of batman and again beautiful figure comic book accurate came with a flight stand and i love the construct it looks great on the shelf just the detailing is just spectacular with this guy. Um, and yeah, again, another beautiful figure from McFarlane Toys. All the Dark Knight Metals figures are awesome in my opinion. I also love that he's actually going to complete the whole set when he releases uh, The Drowned uh, at the beginning of 2021. So that is really cool as well. Okay, uh, let's take a look at a Joker. So here's one of like the three Jokers that he released this year. This is a comic book accurate Joker, and I really like this figure because it's unique. It's got that red around the eyes, which I think is a really interesting choice, and um, I think it's a really cool figure. I, you know, at first when I saw this figure, I thought it was sort of just a retool of the Arkham Joker. I think maybe some parts of it are, but really it's an original piece, and I love this uh, Michael, or sorry, Jack Nicholson style gun as well, so I really like this Joker figure. Okay. What else do we have here? Oh, okay. Here is the first kind of basic Batman that McFarlane Toys ever released. This is the Detective Comics 1000 Batman. And I got to say, this was not a home run for me. I like the figure. It's definitely grown on me. But his head is just kind of, kind of too small, in my opinion. Um, so, yeah, it wasn't my favorite figure. And it's funny because all the Batman figures he's released after this are far superior, so they learned very quickly on this one. But yeah, definitely um, not my favorite. I, I, I wish they released a more normal, basic Batman. Which brings me to this guy. This is the Dark Knight's Metal Batman. Let me get him off the stand here. And this is kind of a basic Batman, but he's a little torn up 
which is fine, but I would love it if they released a regular version of this figure with the purple, uh, with the purple under the cape as a regular basic Batman. But this figure is so cool, and I love what they did with the head here, where it's um, the whole head is connected, so it kind of moves around in a really neat way. So I just, I really love this figure. This is so cool. I love the costume design. This looks like the DC Direct statue that they released. Oops. There goes the stand. There we go. I wish I could tell you I would edit that part out, but I probably won't. But anyways, this is just a phenomenal figure. Love the tattered cape. Love this figure so much. So much. There we go. Alright, what else do we got? Oh, Thomas Wayne. Mr. Thomas Wayne. I think this is probably one of the most popular problem figures of the year is this Thomas Wayne Flashpoint Batman. So, is this is just a beautiful figure. The sculpting, the accuracy to the comic book, um, everything about it is just awesome. It's an awesome character, and it's an awesome figure. Uh, DC Direct made a version of this years ago, which is pretty expensive now, and most people can't get. So I'm really glad McFarlane did this. And again, at least when he does his Batman figures, he does a lot of them. But they're all comic book accurate, really cool figures. So love this uh, Thomas Wayne figure. All right, let's go to something non-Batman. Here is the fat, the Flash. Here is McFarlane Toys' first stab at the Flash, and he nailed it. This is such a cool figure. Love the articulation. The one, love the way he moves. Loves the quality of the suit. Love. I forgot what these are called. The wings on his helmet. It's just a really awesome figure. Ah, oh, so cool. And I can't wait to see like the reverse Flash version of this, which I'm sure they will do. Rob D Toys once again did a composite of this figure as how you might look as the reverse flash go check it out on his instagram page but i can't wait for the reverse flash version of this which i'm sure they'll do but yeah this is just a, such a cool figure okay next we have the robins these are the creepy robins from the dark knight metal uh comic books these weird zombie-ish robins um oh, who've been infected with something i've read the comic but i don't remember what happened guys i have three of them but um, they all, there was three. Fi uh, there's three versions of this figure, each with a different uh, head sculpt. So I did end up getting all three. Uh, but yeah, these are really cool figures. I hope they do just a regular Robin figure in this with this costume, like a traditional Dick Grayson Robin figure, because I love the quality of this costume. So great figure. All right, back to Dark Knight's metal. Here is the Murder Machine, and oh, this is such a cool figure. I love the sleekness of this figure. Uh, my arm does pop off on this one. It's not broken, it just pops out of the socket, and I just have to get him back in there, but it's just such a cool, clean design. Um, so really nice figure. I know I say a lot of the same things a lot, guys. I say they're awesome, they're cool, I'm sorry. I'll try to come up with some new descriptive terms for you. All right, here is the Red Hood. Now, for the this year, we got two Red Hood figures, actually. DC Direct released a DC Essentials Red Hood figure earlier in the year, and then we got this guy, and we were spoiled with awesome Red Hood figures. This one is my favorite, though, just because the way it's designed, the, the, you know, the sculpt, the way you can kind of pose him, um, it's a really nice figure, and it looks great. It's an awesome Red Hood figure. I would love to see a variant of this with maybe a Jason Todd head, but still, it's just a great figure. I'm just trying to move these back and forth to get that auto's focus correct so hopefully I'm doing an okay job it hasn't been focusing on my background or something but yeah there's the red hood and all his awesome glory all right now this was an early release from Todd and uh, from a Farland toys and it's still one of my favorites and this is the Batgirl and I just love the head sculpt on this again it's so accurate to the comic book the costume it just looks phenomenal and uh, to me this is one of the best female head sculpts I've seen it in a really long time, so well done. This figure is just fantastic. There she is. All right, um, next we have Azriel. Oh, Mr. Azriel. We don't get too many Azriel figures. Um, you know, DC Direct made a few. Actually made one. They made the kind of more modern version of Azriel that wasn't even John Paul Valley or Jean Paul Valley, however I'm saying it. Um, so I was very happy to get this figure based on the... Uh, the, the White Knight, Curse of the White Knight, or the White Knight, I forget what it was. But anyways, this is just a fantastic Azrael figure. Um, it still looks like a classic Azrael figure, even though it's based on the newer 
styling of, of the the character and this is just a beautiful figure love the sword articulation was a little bit limited with all the armor but man this is just a beautiful high quality figure um love it just love this figure love it all right what do we got next okay speaking of the white knight here is the white knight batman i dropped his uh, rope accessory i'll get that later but there he is and again this is just like he stepped out of a freaking comic book it's just so beautifully designed and sculpted I'm sure the artists uh, who, who you know drew, drew these comic characters in the comic books are ecstatic that their work is being represented so well in plastic form. And it's hard to do. I'll give you an example. Um, here is, and you guys know how much I love DC Direct, but here is the DC Direct Michael Turner Superman figure. And while I like this figure a lot, you know, Michael Turner's art must be hard to translate to plastic because it's definitely not a perfect translation. Whereas... You see what McFarlane did with Sean Gordon Murphy's artwork, and he, man, it's just perfect. There's nothing awkward about it. It looks like it stepped out of a comic book. So you guys just kind of get an idea that it's not easy to translate, you know, specific artists' artwork to plastic, and I think McFarlane is so far excelling at that. All right, what do we have next? Okay, favorite Superman figure of the year, right here. This is the Superman Unchained figure. This is from the Superman Unchained comic book. I keep saying Unleashed when I do postings of this figure and everyone corrects me right away. But this is just a badass, beautiful Superman figure. I love this armor. Again, it's comic book accurate. It's just something unique. You know, I just have so many Superman figures that um, are more or less, you know, they're, they're the same. You know, there's a lot of differences to be sure, but this, I love unique figure designs now. I just have so many figures that have that are their classic representation. So for me, I'm all about these unique out there designs. So I love this figure so much, so much. I bought two of them and I was gonna keep one but I ended up just doing a giveaway instead because I'm like, what am I gonna do with two of them, you know? Um, anyways, okay, so here is another figure from the Curse of the White Knight. This is the As Bats figure. This is Asriel as Batman. Let's get the focus there. And again, looks like it stepped out of the comic book. This thing is a freaking beast. Beautifully detailed, sculpted, executed, just a perfect figure in my opinion. I know some of you give me a lot, a lot of crap for calling things perfect, but as far as the action figure goes, it doesn't get any more perfect than this. This is just a, a beautiful, beautiful figure. I'm trying to get the focus on the figure and not my face. There we go. So, again, well done on this figure. Let's put him down over here. All right, just three more to go. Just three more to go. Okay, here's Harley Quinn. Um, this is a really awesome just basic Harley Quinn figure, classic costume. I, I dig it just because it's like her classic costume. And uh, lately all the Harley Quinns we've gotten have been more, you know, New 52, Rebirth, or whatever costumes. I just love this classic Harley um, costume in a seven inch four, a scale. So well done. Okay. Now we have the Batman Who Laughs. Now, this character is cool. I mean, I, I like him in the comic books. He's fine. He's a little bit played out, I think, though. I He's he's okay. I can't say he's one of my favorite villains or anything like that. He's a cool version of Batman. But, um, yeah, he's, he's fine. And the figure is well done, so kudos there. And then next, we have the Grim Knight. Oh, and, wow, I love this figure so much. This goes against everything that Batman stands for. And he's got a bunch of guns. Uh, it's more like the Punisher. But if you're going to do an alternate reality Batman and uh, he's got to be armored, wow, look look at this guy. He is so detailed. The guns are awesome. Yes, each gun is not individually created and attached, but whatever. It's just a beautiful, beautiful figure. Oh, I love this figure so much. And you can just pose him in some really cool ways, and he's just a beautiful figure. Okay, just a couple more figures I want to talk about. So next we have Deathstroke. So here he is. There is the Arkham Knight or Arkham Origins. It's based from the video game. There's Deathstroke and it's freaking awesome. I love Deathstroke. I buy all of his figures. He's one of my favorite villains and I just love this rendition of Deathstroke. The sheath, sheath <laughs> the sword goes through is a little weird. But you can kind of see it when you put it in there. Um, and, but that's about it. Other than that, this is just a, a freaking awesome, beautiful figure. Alright, last two figures. Um, 
So let's talk about the Devastator. Here is the Devastator. This is Batman and Doomsday combined. So this is just a heavy, beautiful, amazing figure. I mean, look, the jaw moves. Ah, how cool is that? So it's just a really awesome figure. The, the paint is amazing. The detailing, the heft. You know, this should have been a Build-A-Figure, but it was just a normally priced figure. And it's just an awesome figure. It's just, this is gorgeous. This is gorgeous. There we go. All right, the last figure I'll talk about in this video is the one and only Collect and Connect, the Merciless. So here he is, McFarland's first Collect and Connect figure or build a figure, whatever you want to call it, and it is a beauty. I love the the metal, the metallic look to it. The detailing is fantastic, and it is just a awesome figure, you know. And that's pretty much the theme of my McFarland Toys <laughs> reviews is that they're all just really awesome figures. Um, uh, you know, I'm a pretty pretty positive person. I tend to not talk about things that I don't like. That's just the way I am. I don't really like to waste energy on things that I don't like. Um, with, when it comes to McFarland Toys, I talked about a few of my criticisms in this video. The one figure I probably like the least, which I don't have handy, of course, is the Green Arrow figure. I just feel like he's a little puffy. He's grown out, grow He's grown on me over time, but I feel like his jacket is just a little bit too puffy, but that's really it. Um, other than that, I think McFarland Toys has just done a great job this year with the DC license. I'm so excited for what's going to happen in uh, year two of McFarland Toys and year three, and I hope they continue to keep the DC license and do amazing things with it. So thank you to McFarland Toys for all the awesome figures this year. I would love to hear what your favorite figures are in the comments. And I hope everyone has a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Of course, depending on when you watch this, those things might have already passed. So, yeah, there you go. Uh, thanks, guys. Have a great day.